this video shows how to effectively use substance textures in Clo 3D. This is shown on the Ides female suit using our Ides tailoring fabrics, which I will link in the video description, but this is applicable to all SBSAR files from Adobe or textures created in Substance Designer. This information is super important for making substance textures look good in your 3D renders. I'll try to get to the few things you need to know most as quickly as I can in case you don't want to watch the whole video. The first thing to understand is SBSAR substance files are simply textures. So in Clo, a fabric is made up of two general components the physical properties that determine how it drapes in 3D, and then the way it looks. Clo ZFab files include both of these elements. Substance files only determine the way it looks, and they need to be applied to a physical fabric drape in order to be realistic. Here I have a cotton Oxford fabric. I've used a substance file for the Oxford texture, but down at the bottom you can see I've used the Clo cotton Oxford fabric as my physical drape. So one way to apply a physical drape to an already applied texture is to use this drop-down menu at the bottom of the property editor. You can apply the physical drape of any Clo fabric in the library without changing the way the fabric looks. The other way to apply a substance texture to a fabric drape would be to first grab a Clo ZFab file from the fabric library and drag and drop it onto your fabric chip in the object browser. You can see here I've already applied wool cashmere to my suit. Then you can drag and drop your substance file onto the same chip. It doesn't change the drape of the ZFab file, but it will replace the texture or the look of the original Clo fabric. The two most important things to know about using substance files in Clo are first this drop down menu for resolution. The default resolution for a substance file in Clo is 1024 pixels. If you're looking at a fabric close up, essentially the fabric on your garment, this won't look good. It can even seem like it has a gritting issue in the texture. You want to change the resolution to the highest option of 4096. The only time you might want to use lower resolution is for things in the background. If you have a full scene, there's no need for the texture of a curtain in the background to be in high res, but definitely the garment you're rendering should be. The second important thing to change is the reflection parameters. I see this as a flaw in how substance and clo speak to each other, but essentially this defaults to 100 in clo, which is adding reflectivity to your texture that was not part of the original intent. If you bring this to zero, that is the true intended look of the texture created in substance. You can absolutely increase it if you want to add more reflectivity, but just know that zero is the starting point. Now I'll go through all other substance settings. The texture mapping dropdown should default to repeat. You will only need to change this to unified if you're working with UV maps. Here you'll find the preset options. This includes colorways or prints that the fabric creator has offered to you as presets. They may or may not have different settings to the overall texture as well. Displacement map parameters will be set as a default if the creator has intended you to use displacement maps. This is often the case when acquiring files from the Adobe library. In the case of Ides, all of our tailoring fabrics are relatively flat fabrics, and so they don't need any displacement settings. If the default is set to zero, it's safe to assume there is no displacement map applied. Displacement maps create three-dimensional height and are most necessary for very thick texturized materials like sweater knits, sherpa, fur, and generally things with a heavy pile. Displacement map settings will slow down your rendering, especially if you decrease the particle distance. I'll put a link about displacement maps in the video description if you need a full explanation of how they work. Custom properties and technical parameters are all the things you're able to customize about the fabric. These options will be different for every fabric and are determined by the fabric creator. They may or may not give you the option to change certain things and they can also name what those things are. The random seed will be an option for all substance fabrics. It basically randomizes the texture and moves it around a bit. You may find that if you play around with it, you like one setting better than the default, but it'll be different for every fabric and whether or not it's even noticeable. You may find color settings here under custom properties or in technical parameters. You may also find that there are multiple color options. You can see here in my Oxford fabric, there's a color for warp and a color for weft yarns. That's what creates that signature checkerboard look synonymous with Oxford fabric. Because these sliders are all named by the fabric creator, the easiest way to figure out what they do is to mess around with them and see what changes. You can always edit undo something if you wanna go back to the default setting. When changing any of these settings, you may decide you want to turn on the quality render view in the 3D window to get a better idea of what it's going to look like. 
but nothing will be as accurate as actually going to the render window and seeing a render preview. Here you'll see we have a drop down menu called stripes. So in addition to our default color options for this fabric, we also have default stripes that can be applied in different widths and spacings. Make sure you scroll through all the custom properties and technical parameters to see the full extent of what's available for a texture. Under technical parameters, normal intensity exists for all textures. It's the intensity of the normal map and can be quite important when it comes to rendering and noise. I found with some of my shinier fabrics that if the normal map intensity is too high, the sheen and rendering would be a bit like the render didn't fully finish. You can see on the right here versus the left where the intensity is higher, there's more noise. And this one on the left again is even less noisy still. The normal format should default to OpenGL and Clo. That's what Clo supports. The rest of these parameters again are going to depend on the fabric and I suggest just playing around with them to figure out what they do if you're interested. Lastly, you have transformation, which is about the scale of the overall texture. The thing I would suggest here is that you note the size the texture came in at, and you scale by size rather than percentage. I find there's some kind of bug in CLO 7.1 with substance textures, and if you change the percentage, you might look back a few minutes later and find that the percentage has changed again. The number there may be incorrect. Keep aspect ratio checked so that it scales proportionately. The position X and Y is going to move the fabric around on those axes on all pattern pieces. I personally find the best way to do this, assuming you're not setting up a marker, is to just use the edit texture tool in 3D or 2D and click and drag the texture around on each individual pattern until you get the visual that you want. Once you've made some edits and you're happy with what you have, you can now save this out as your own ZFab. The texture image only option will use the original image from the substance file. If you want to use a custom image, you can screen shoot your new fabric or do a render of it before saving it out and just apply that image here. So now I have my own custom wool cashmere suiting.